looking to throw again for the end zone, laying out, broken up beautifully by C.J. Henderson against Jamar Chase. That would be a good matchup well, all night. Yeah, that's the matchup we want to see. C.J. Henderson is an outstanding corner, has great size, great speed. I love that he has his head turned, locates the football. Oh, you've done a great job in this drive, expect some more. Nope, it's a pass play. Helens, he's got to get this one's going to be intercepted by Christian Fulton. That was a misread. It was zoned all the way. He didn't see it. Tried to stick it into Thomas, number two, but Fulton, who just made the defend and play on the long pass, baits the quarterback. Christian Walker looked at that. Almost passed it. <laughs> but Bo Jackson. But here's a long ball from Schrader. Got him on third and three, and another interception. He threw it right to Diggs. And Diggs, who had a fumble recovery for a touchdown last week, has a pick six this week. Touchdown, Bama. There is a flag down in the secondary back at the 17. Pass interference, number seven, offense. This is the climb, touchdown. Mississippi State. Here's Tommy Stevens. Take a deep shot down the middle of the field. Yer, yer, yo, that. What's going on? Your boy, Fully Fresh, aka the General, here reporting for duty, man. Uh, once again, I want to thank everybody, you know, to watch these videos. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. I appreciate it, man. If you already subscribed, hit that bell next to the subscribe button. Let you know when I'm posting another video, man. Y'all know how I get down. Break down the Eagles, you know, to the best of my ability. I'm always going to keep it a bean with y'all. And uh, today, what we going to talk about, man, we going to talk about this cornerback situation, secondary situation, and the things I think that they should really do in the all season, meaning the Eagles, who to bring in and who to try to draft and whether they should go up and get these dudes or, you know, uh, just stay still and, and see who falling you let. So first I'm going to go to free agency. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I really don't. I'm going to run these names down to y'all, but I really don't like none of these names. Um, Chris Harris Jr. Uh, we all know he was in the no fly zone and, uh, and, and, uh, with the Broncos and all that won a championship. Ain't really felony. Too old to me, man. Um, it's time to bring a new culture to this team. You do want to have veterans on your team, of course. But I feel as though we're not good at having an old team. So Chris Harris is uh Chris Harris is out. Um Mike Hilton, no, from Detroit. Uh too small. Too small. Only five nine. That's another thing to change this culture with these CBs. We're too small. Uh, you got, I think the tallest one we have is Rasul. I think he's just six feet and he's not fast enough. So we have to draft or find out there, um, cornerbacks that's, that's tall and big. I'm going to get into that in a minute, but I just want to run off these names. Byron Jones, hell no. Hell no. No more. J just for the simple fact, he's a Dallas fan. I mean, a Dallas Cowboy, an uh, ex-Dallas Cowboy. If he doesn't uh, resign with them, which I'm, I'm, I think he might. Jerry Jones might want to keep him. Um, the reason, one, another reason that I ain't feeling it because what we need from a veteran at this stage, what we need from a veteran quarterback is somebody that can shut down one side of the field. That you really don't have to worry about that side of the field. That the safety really doesn't have to worry about. We don't have that. We haven't had that in a long time since what Lito. So. We have to find that. And none of these dudes that I just named or none of that. Either they too old or they're not fast enough or they're not big enough. And being at our history with Dallas, this is another reason why I don't want Byron Jones. Our history with Dallas, players is not good. You've just seen our Landry, uh Scandal situation. Remember DeMarco Murray? We got him, paid him all that money. He was utilized wrongly, but still. A track record with Dallas players, getting ex Dallas players is not good. Now let's get into the draft. This is where it gets way more interesting. This is where it gets way more interesting. There's a couple names on here I really don't know how to pronounce. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Um, the cornerback from Ohio State, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, 
Orkda, Orkda. I'm not pretty sure, but I I seen this dude highlights. I think he's going to go in the first round. He's 6'1", 200 pounds. That's the type of cornerback that we need. This dude is a shutdown corner. It looks like he can be. He can come right in and start, and he can be your number one corner from the rip. But I don't. I feel as though he's going to go in the top ten probably, and I don't think we got a chance of getting him. I mean, we do got a lot of picks. There's places we can move up, but I know a lot of dudes want to get a running back first. I'm kind of on that level, but at the same time, if this dude slip a little bit, he is that lethal. He is that much of a shutdown cornerback that I was just talking about. A young shutdown cornerback that I feel as though you don't have to worry about his side. You, your safeties can go do them, and he can shut down the whole side. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, he, he plays zone good. He plays man-to-man. -man. He's big. He's fast. He's strong. All that. I like him. Um, The next one I like, though. I like C.J. Henderson, man, out of Florida, man. 6'1", 186. I think he can get a little bit bigger. But the speed is uncanny. The speed. He can turn his hips. Um, I think he might go in the middle of the second round. I think he's kind of not being looked at, especially when you got other dudes. And I'm going to get into them dudes that I feel as though probably going to – um. Probably go in the uh, in probably like the middle of the first round or top of the second round, but this dude Henderson man, good speed and he can tackle. He can tackle. No wait, is this dude? I'm sorry, he can't tackle. That's just, that's that's the reason why I feel as though he might drop. It's because he's not really a good tackler, but the techniques that you have and the techniques that you don't have, you can gain them kind of techniques, especially when you got a DB coach. That we just got and not getting into that at the end of this video. Um, Trevor Diggs. Uh, I'm kind of iffy about Trevor Diggs, man. Um, just turned just turned the cornerback. He really has a wide receiver body. I really don't understand. What is he? He's 6'2, 195, solid, good speed, he's physical, but his technique isn't there just because he, he just turned into a cornerback. I'm not sure whoever drafts him, they might put him back at running back. He just looks like a running back. I mean, not running back. Uh, he just looks like a wide receiver. He is built like a wide receiver. Now, if he can make the transition to be able to be a corner, a good corner, he has the perfect size to shut down any corner in the league. Any corner in the league. But his technique is not good. He has to get better technique. Um... He's as fast as his brother, Stefan Diggs. I know who Stephon Diggs is. I think he could be a good prospect. You can groom him into being a corner. But who knows? Maybe he can be a, a dude that does it all for you, does a lot of things for you. You know, um, I think he might go in the bottom of the second round. Maybe you can get him, but I'm not too high on him because you got this dude, man, Christian Fulton. I like this dude, man. He's only six feet, 192, great feet. Great feet, great footwork, can turn his hips, um, good technique. I like this dude a lot. And the thing about him, he went against all year. He went against some of the best wide receiver prospects that's coming out this year with an Alabama and Clemson and all them kind of guys, man. So you can see, you can see that he ain't no pushover. Does he have work to do? All these dudes do. They got work to do, but he is a full cornerback to me and I feel as though if you can snatch him I'm not sure exactly where he's going to go but if you can snatch him I think you need to get him his only flaw is he's not good at um he's not good at the 50 50 ball like he gets he got sometimes his technique gets a little crazy when the ball's in the air high but when a, when it's a line drive he's there he turns his hips like I said it can get to the ball but when it's hanging in the air I don't know. Sometimes he like a deer in headlights, so that's something that you gotta. Uh, that's something that you gotta look at, man. Um, that's really it for the prospects um, coming out of the draft that I really, really, really like. It's other dudes that I, I feel as though I want to get into. You know, go round by round, like day by day. Like you got your first and your second round, your, and, and that's day one. Then day two, I get in the. Uh, I get in the picks I feel as though we should get in day day two and day three and all that kind of stuff. That's your third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh round. So it's still 
this is just the first the first day of the dudes that I feel as though that we can that we can get in uh, that that we should be able to get some of them I know that we can't but I just wanted to bring that up um uh um, this dude Manuel, man, a new coach that we just got, man. I like this move a whole lot, and it's a multiple reasons why I like this move, man. It's multiple reasons why I like this move. Number one, the dude been in some good locker rooms. He been in some great defensive locker rooms. Seattle, in the middle of their Legion of Boom situation. Um, he been in, he been in, the, uh, he been, in, he been to the Super Bowl. Um, he been in, he had, he had. He had dudes that can teach him and show him things like Pete Carroll, who is a great defensive coach, and uh, Dan Quinn, who was a good defensive coach. I ain't going to call him great, but he's a good defensive coach. Um, the reason that I like this is because you have a dude that I feel as though can, can get into Jim Schwartz's ear. The dude's 41. He played, in, he played in, at safety in the league for a certain amount of years. I think about seven years. But he's a dude that you can... You can, you, uh, that Jim can go to and ask him, yo, what do you say? What, what is it that I'm not doing right, right here with these cornerbacks? And he can do that. And I feel as though he can also show good technique to our young corners. Cause we got a lot of young corners, especially if we draft some, we got a young, uh, a lot of young corners like, um, like Maddox, who I think if, uh, if uh, Malcolm Jenkins doesn't come back, I feel as though Maddox is going to be the next Malcolm Jenkins. He's going to be the the kind of do everything kind of linebacker here and free safety here and in in the box safety here. Um, so I feel as though he can help that a lot, help develop all these all these young CBs that we have, cornerbacks. I mean, these young CBs that we have. And I feel as though he'll he'll be able to do a great job of that. And not only that, he can be the predecessor to Jim. Because we all know Jim, was, he had an interview with Cleveland. I don't think a lot of people thought he was going to get that job. But that is putting him on the radar for next year. Especially if this defense turns around and has a good year, he's going to probably get a head coaching job next year. So now you got his predecessor. Now you got somebody that can take over that already that you can implement in the defense that now know the defense and been in Jim Swartz defense for a year. So I think that that's a great move, man. Um, Once again, I want to thank everybody that, that, that watched this video, man. Like I said, man, we a family, man. Uh, I do this. I do this because I love doing it. And I, I, I know that y'all like that I do this, so I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep grinding, man. That's what I do, man. But I need everybody to, you know, hit that subscribe button, man. Hit that subscribe button, man. Push me out there, man. It's a lot of things, like I said before, that I'm trying to do with this channel. But I need y'all help, man. Uh, Y'all know the slogan, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Stay Philly. Stay fresh, y'all.